so glad that we can be together in this way, even if we can't see each other. Virtual hugs to you. I miss you. I love you. Um, I can't wait until we get to actually be in the same room together again. We're going to start out today with a little object lesson. We're getting ready for this best day ever of Easter next Sunday, and we're building up to that, and I've sort of been building up with that with our object lessons and the lessons we've been talking about. Today, I'm going to start with an object lesson. I know you can't completely see it, but you'll be able to see it when it when it starts moving. Today, I've got this candle, and in the bottom of my plate, I have some red liquid. This coin right here represents us. So I'm going to put us in the plate. I know you can't quite see that, but you'll be able to see what happens, the effects of it. So we are covered in sin. We can't help it. We are human. There's only one person that ever walked this earth who was without sin, and that was Jesus. We sin every day in little ways, even if we don't mean to. So we need Jesus. We need Jesus to cover our sins so that we can be with God for all eternity in heaven. And that's what this is going to represent. So I have a glass jar or container here. And I'm going, to go, I'm going to cover our candle. And we're going to see what happens to all that sin as Jesus enters the picture. As Jesus enters the picture, hopefully you can kind of start to see these bubbles. And it takes a little bit, and now it's starting to rise. If you can see this, the sin, the red liquid, is traveling up inside of our container because Jesus takes that sin away and now he takes it away from us. And we get to be with God for all eternity. I love this demonstration that shows him literally taking that sin on himself. And that's what we're getting ready to talk about with Easter coming up is Jesus taking on our sins. And as we get ready to talk about Easter, today is Palm Sunday. I know these are some sad little palm leaves, but you're going to imagine with me. They're great big palm leaves. So I'm going to read a verse to you from, oh, from the Bible. And we're going to talk about what happened on why we celebrate Palm Sunday. This is from Matthew chapter 20. It starts with verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner. This is not, no, you know what? My thing changed all by itself. You silly thing. It's chapter 21. Okay, there we go. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem, I can't talk, and came to Beth on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went, ahead, went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. 
A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. That's where our palm branches come in. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So when we are talking about Palm Sunday, and we are talking about Jesus entering Jerusalem and getting a king's welcome. He didn't come like a normal king, right? We have kings. We think of kings coming on big white horses and parades of people who are honoring them. And Jesus, because it was a prophecy, came on a donkey, which is simple and humble because That's how Jesus lived. Jesus came and lived among the people and taught the people. And it was just as it was prophesied. Sort of going along with what Tim was talking about. Jesus had to fulfill these prophecies to prove to the people who he was. But as he comes into Jerusalem, there's no TV Guys, so they don't know what he looks like. They've heard stories about him, and they've heard of these miracles that he has performed, but they get to see him, and it is exciting, and they're lining the streets, and the roads were made of dirt. They weren't paved, and so he wouldn't be dirty. They covered the roads with palm, palm leaves and with their cloaks so that he could ride in and be clean, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about Palm Sunday. So he gets sort of this hero's welcome when he first gets there, but we We know that it was as we enter this week and get ready for uh, Easter Sunday that things take a change. And it's going to be, there are some dark, dark days, right? Good Friday is probably one of the darkest days that we talk about. That's the day that Jesus was crucified. So on Friday, on Good Friday, I want you to think about that before we get to visit again on Easter Sunday, that take some time and pray and think about the sacrifice Jesus knew he had to go through for us to save us to take that sin away from us he knew that he had to be beaten and tortured and made fun of and die painfully on the cross but he did it he did it for you he did it for me he did it for all of us so that we someday get the greatest gift of all which is to go to heaven for all eternity. So I'm going to pray with you for just a second, and I hope you'll keep this in mind this week as we go into this holy week. Lord, thank you for being with all of us this week. Help us to give our fears to you. Help us to praise you and to thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, as we get ready to celebrate this, the biggest holiday for us and the biggest, greatest gift you could have given us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a great week. I can't wait to see you on Easter. I'm excited to celebrate Easter, even though we've got to do it in kind of a different way. I love you. Big hugs to you. Have a great week. Bye.